untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Well, well, well. And we meet again, old friend. How can I say no to the Tiamat challenge? Now, we're not gonna wield the green dragon, but there's some common dragons we can pick up too with uh, the red one that cares about treasures. There's the Troubadour, that's another dragon. So, you know. Is this deck gonna get seven wins? Probably not. Are we gonna have a good time? Probably, yes. Oof, this is tough. I mean, White Dragon would be perfect for Tiamat. Although Varus is very good too and can potentially fix her mana by making treasure with the Venture. And we probably want to be green as a base color for a few of the mana fixers like uh, the card that gets something back out of the graveyard or gets two basic lands. Although White Dragon's kind of difficult to pass up when we're drafting a Tiamat deck. I don't think we can afford to pass many of these uncommon dragons. So, yeah, it kind of hurts to pass Varus, but uh, we'll stick to the dragon theme. All right, Grim Bounty is pretty good and makes a treasure to fix our mana. So I'm guessing we're probably going to be black-green as a base and then try and pick up as much mana fixing as possible. Eye of Vecna would be okay, but we're already going to be a slow deck, so having to pay a bunch of life seems unnecessary. All right, let's take this Grim Bounty and then take it from here. All right, so I'm not seeing any dragons, not seeing any mana fixing. Could take the removal spell. Don't think Death Priest is going to be great, even though we just took a Grim Bounty. The Conjurer could technically ramp, but don't think we want to be main blue. So, yeah, here's something on watch. Seems okay, especially given that we already have a white dragon that kind of pulls us into white a little bit. Seems fine. Okay. So a dungeon map ramps, but it doesn't fix our colors, so it's not incredibly useful for casting Tiamat. That being said, it's not like Planar Ally is all that amazing either. It can potentially, of course, make a treasure by venturing, so that's a form of mana fixing. Could also take a Herd Gorger, but we already have some expensive cards and we're probably going to pick up more 6 mana dragons. So, yeah, I don't think this pick is all that amazing for us, but uh, I guess I'll go with Ally in case we do end up heavy white. Well, Hoarding Ogre makes treasure, I guess. That can help. Cursed Idol could help as well. Yeah, I was expecting to be green as a base color, but I guess green hasn't been incredibly open after the first two picks. Didn't really want to charm sleep at double blue. So maybe Hoarding Ogre is the way to go. End up in some sort of uh, Mardu treasure deck. And then uh, splash Tiamat. Who knows? We'll go with the flow. Okay, Precipitous Drop, I guess, kind of stays on theme. Works well with our Planar Ally. And don't really see another compelling pick here. Alright, another Planar Ally, I guess. Maybe we're just, yeah, black white venture into the dungeon. Splashing Tiamat. Alright, we wield a green dragon, I'll take it. 
didn't really expect it to wield, but it is definitely the weakest of the Uncommon Dragon cycle. So, pick that one up. I could see Spare Dagger being okay if we end up with a few Death Touch creatures. Although that probably requires us to be black green as a base instead of white. Would love to pick up, of course, the Dragon Temple and Evolving Wilds. So I don't think this pick is going to matter a whole lot. Maybe take a Feign Death and get our Tiamat back. Sure, we'll take a Spare Dagger now. Alright, kind of surprised these both wield. Go with the Conjurer. Alright. So not a bad start for a Tiamat deck, given that we already have two other dragons. Now we'll need some mana fixing, but uh, not gonna say no to a Paladin class. Just a powerful white card. Definitely not gonna be at its best in this deck, given that we're not really a low curve creature deck. So it's probably <laughs> as bad as it gets in our deck, but it's still probably worth it. And I don't really see another compelling reason to take something else. All right, <laughs> I think we're second picking Evolving Wilds. What else would we be interested in? I guess a Minimus Containment would be okay. But I think Evolving Wilds is just too important to pass up here. Well, how can I possibly pass up on a blue dragon in our Tiamat deck? I mean, we gotta collect them all. We're just missing black dragon and red dragon. And then, uh, yeah, once we have the dragons, we can start picking up some uh, additional mana fixing and ramp. If we weren't taking Blue Dragon, I guess Priest or... I mean, we're probably not going to have much synergy with Cleric class. So Priest would make more sense. Alright, Triple Green is going to be a bit tough. So I'll pass on that. Shambling Ghast, if we could cast it, would be okay. Steadfast Paladins, decent. I also don't hate something like a Potion of Healing if we can wheel it, just as a cantrip that gains a bit of life. Cloister Gargoyle could also be decent if we're gonna go heavy on the Venture theme. Uh, yeah, we're probably gonna be white as a main color. And uh, the Venture can also fix our mana. Hoarding Ogre is tempting, but I just don't know if we're gonna be reds. All that much, although I'm also not really interested in a Dwarfold Champion or Lightfoot Rogue. So maybe I do take the Ogre now, get those additional treasures. Find some prisoners could also be interesting as a way of finding a splash color of the opponent's lands if we cast a second mode. But uh, yeah, Hoarding Ogre. Maybe I'm just like Red White and then we don't play the Grim Bounty, who knows. And just know that treasures are going to be useful. Well, this does make treasures, but I don't think I can afford a colorless land in my mana base. So probably go for priests. Gretchen seems a bit ambitious. Priest is a card we can cast. Gives us an early play. And... Uh, I guess the Clattering Skeletons, if we're going to continue with venturing, is fine. So yeah, our, our deck is Black White, Splash, Tiamat, and a bunch of dragons. Is it going to work out? We'll find out soon enough. <laughs> Monk class? Yeah, I think I'll have to pass on the Monk class, but Eighth Pick Priest is a gift. Probably not going to be a great Blink Dog deck. Has a bit of synergy with Paladin class, I suppose. But that's about it. I guess there's a dragon. The Cell Sword's a dragon, yeah. I'm 
Sure, more rare drafts. And the unicorn could be okay with double priests. All right, we wield the potion. Think I'll take that over fireball. All right, so I'm glad we second picked Evolving Wilds because we haven't seen any other mana fixing so far. Oh boy. I mean, Mind Flayer is cool and all, but there's a black dragon. It's even on color. Dragon 4 out of 5. Gotta take it. Just missing our red dragon. <laughs> this is a dragon. That counts. And it's actually a good card we can cast. And this is a dragon too. Oh man. I think we're going for the record of most dragons. But uh, yeah, gotta go with Nadar. So what are we actually working with? Yeah, we've got a decent uh, backbone with a couple priests at least. Oof, Orcus, I mean, I guess we could splash that. I don't really see any other great options. Yeah, I mean, might as well. It's not a dragon, but close enough. I actually don't hate Zorn making double treasure. Although, casting a red 3-drop might be a little tricky. What else are we taking? Like, don't really think we need an extra 6-drop. There's a spiked pit trap, which can maybe make a treasure. Seems pretty weak. Yeah, might as well go all in here. <laughs> yeah. Do we want another dragon? I mean, if I'm not taking Black Dragon, there's nothing else I want, so sure. That's a lot of Bruinors. The Fangblade seems decent. Good defensive creature that helps us venture. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't look like we're getting another Evolving Wilds. I guess uh, a Monk or a Champion. Don't have any 2-drops, that's a bit concerning. Probably need to take the Champion. And uh, even though we're probably not going to get to cast it on turn 2, I should probably still take the Captain over something like Dryder, which is pretty clunky. Swarming Goblins, good at stabilizing. I don't think this pick is going to matter. All right, so blue was pretty open, but let's see here. Well, we got a lot of dragons. If we look at the creature types, eight dragons total. It's pretty good. Now, how are we going to cast all these dragons is a question. The green dragon and the blue dragon especially are going to be pretty tough. <laughs> the land suggestion here is kind of all over the place. So we need to make about six cuts. I'm also not opposed to playing 18 lands in this deck. So means seven cuts. Let's have a look, shall we? Yeah, the sideboard doesn't have anything super useful. So, 
you know, there's there's a case to be made for cutting the green dragon and the blue dragon and just going Mardu. And then we can still get value from Tiamat using Black Dragon, White Dragon, Cell Sword, and Nadar. We could do that. We're not really a living the dream. But then again, not being able to cast our spells is also kind of lame. Yeah, if we kind of treat this draft as a seal deck, we would probably cut Green Dragon, Blue Dragon, keep Tiamat for fun, and then we still get plenty of value of Tiamat. Yeah, I mean, we tried. If I got some additional mana fixing, I would have gone for it. But the fact that we only have the one Evolving Wilds and we already need treasure to cast our spells normally means I'm almost never going to get to double blue, double green. Like, imagine casting Tiamat using all our treasure, then we have no treasure left to cast the dragons we searched up. So, yeah, it's a little lame, but uh, I think casting our spells is going to be important. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck. The Unicorn seems a little bit out of place. We have double Priest to grow it. And maybe through Venturing. But I don't really think we need it. I'm still okay playing the Potion just as a, a cantrip potentially. Although it is cuttable. It's kind of whatever. And then Devoted Paladin can maybe be cut. So how many Venture cards do we actually have? Eh, we've got a few. Might be enough to justify Gargoyle. I'm not opposed to cutting the Gargoyle. Have a lot of other three drops. Skeletons could also go. I cut some of the venture cards, keep the ones that repeatedly venture with a planar ally and Nadar. And then play 18 lands, kind of like that. And then the mana base is going to be kind of interesting. Probably not going to play forest and just rely on treasures to cast Tiamat. Only need two treasures. And then... Let's see... Seven Plains, Five Swamp, Five Mountain, Evolving Wilds. Yeah, that seems kind of reasonable. Don't have a ton of double-colored cards, at least, in the early curve. Just Grim Bounty, Double Black, Planar Ally, Double White, and then some of our Dragons. So... Yeah, is this a good mana base? Definitely not. But is it the best we can do? Given the circumstances, I think so. Dungeons and Dragons, I mean, gotta go with a classic. This is like perfectly describing what our deck is all about. <laughs> all right, starting out strong. Uh, sure. I'm not gonna cast the Grim Bounty, most likely. But we've got a removal spell into a cell sword. Alright. Full Mardu turn three. Probably not gonna bother killing the innkeeper. I mean we're just two treasure away from casting Tiamat. Or a swamp and one treasure. If they're using the treasure to fix for white mana, that could mean that they're missing a color here, which is good news. Alright, they found the planes. So we'll take a bit of a hit. Or I could just trade and then 
something on watch on the bard, that's probably fine. Ooh. Never mind. Gotta start making treasure. So go for the lost mine. Can scry towards the swamp as well. Alright, that one hits pretty hard. And that one does too. Alright, Swamp was a good draw. So we could technically cast the Amad next turn, if I'm not mistaken. And there's a Dragon. Although, do I want to draw the Dragon when we're gonna put it in play with, or search it up with Tiamat? I guess I want to bottom it then. Assuming my planar ally gets to connect again, I make a treasure, Grim Bounty makes a treasure, and I can cast Tiamat next turn. So, it's kind of weird, but I think we bottom not our... And then take out Circle Moon Druid, I guess. A ranger, sure. I'm fine trading my planar ally. I hope they trade. Opponent takes it. All right, it's time. First game, successfully cast Tiamat. Achievement unlocked. Sadly, only have three dragons left since we already cast the Soul Sword. And let's see if we're dead. If we're not dead, Black Dragon. It's pretty great on this board. If they cannot remove Tiamat, we have a chance. If they can... Oof. Okay. So we're taking... 12? Well, that's, that's disappointing. I guess they were playing around us potentially having some interaction. Took them a while. <laughs> All right, this hand is uh, nowhere close to playing a Tiamat, but still a fine hand. Perfect. Keep hitting those land drops. I guess I don't mind attacking and then clearing a path for the ogre to maybe make a bunch of treasure. Could attack with both, but don't really want to two for one myself. So we'll just send the ogre. And then. I've got some options. I mean, I could still just play the cell sword without haste, and then uh, the next turn, white dragon can maybe clear a path for us. Also keeps up our two mana instant in the meantime. 
It's probably okay. And then hold Orcus to maybe get a bit more value. So now we could set up a pretty devastating Orcus. If I tank with a priest and they block with bullets, then Orcus can wipe the opponent's board, basically. So I don't hate that idea. Possibly just straight for the wolf, fearing like a manticore. Herd Gorger, we can Grim Bounty or tap it down with the White Dragon. Let's see, this is 9, 10, 11, 12. Not quite lethal if we pump, but next turn it would be, and our opponent explodes. Well, that was a pretty nice showing of Orcus. Okay, turn one Paladin class, sign me up. Great with her Swarming Goblins too. I mean, the first thing you think about when seeing this opening hand is this is a Tiamat deck, right? We have the perfect curve, Captain into level up, into 4 drop, into 5 drop. Might play the Fang Blade, we'll see. Alright, fine, I'll trade. Alright, that's kind of annoying. We're not the ones supposed to be playing defense here, but uh, yeah, it's not like we're gonna outrace them. So against battle cry, should probably just straight for the battle cry. Opponents on empty. It's a good roll. And now we can attempt to make some blocks. Would love to level up our paladin class as soon as possible. So I could double block Dwarfhold Champion and only lose Swarming Goblins. It's probably a fine double block. If I can avoid losing the Ogre, that would be nice. What are the merits of throwing an extra Goblin in front if they have plus one plus one? But if they have any other trick, I think double block's better. Both 
and I'm gonna start venturing. Alright, so I don't hate a level of Paladin class attack with Ogre and then play another Ogre. Now we can block the captain, so we're pretty stable. And we can play a white dragon next turn before leveling up further. Seems safe enough. And then I can level up next turn if needed. Yeah, the White Dragon is lethal by itself with a level 3 Paladin class. Okay, on the play. Yeah, I mean, if we draw planes, we can play Champion, draw Swamp, we can play Green Bounty, and then he lands, curves Fangblade into Orcus, so. Blink Dog. Well, could Grim Bounty it? They might trade for the Fang Blade, not sure. Orcus could also kill it by giving minus one, minus one next turn. And then I'm not doing anything this turn. So, kind of a close call. Think we attack and then hope they don't trade. Right. And then I'm gonna go for the treasure again, probably. Yeah, I'll take an ogre. I think the plan's just Orcus minus one next turn. That can fix my mana somewhat. Alright, so a Zorn next turn before attacking should be a good time. I could play the Dwarf Hall Champion too. That's probably fine.
yeah, it's probably okay to just take this out. Still have a white dragon we can cast next turn. Get our double treasure thanks to Zorn. And our opponents out of creatures. GG's. Once again, would have been able to cast Tiamat here, but it didn't show up. Fine hand. We could take out Champion, although the tokens from Swarming Goblins do block it. Then again, Hoarding Ogre also trades for Champion. It's probably okay to trade here. Loyal Warhounds with value, nice. Opponent most likely trades for Warhounds. If they don't, I'm pretty happy because Swarming Goblins lines up well against it. There's a chance they don't trade. And we got our two treasures, so that's enough for Tiamat. Okay, what do we tap down? Could be the Paladin as opposed to the Pegasus. And then they have to trade Pegasus and Goblin. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Paladin is also annoying, but if they answer my dragon, I think killing the flyer is still better. Alright, Tiamat off the top one time. So I should probably stay back. The good news of drawing this many lands is that once we do find Tiamat, we'll be able to deploy those extra dragons right away. Hmm, this is concerning. So, two mana can have plus one, plus three, could have a rapier, could have plus one, plus one. Could be a critical hit. So, in most of those scenarios, I'm fine putting White Dragon in front of Priest. Which is probably what I'm gonna do. Ah, was a rapier. It's too bad. Oh yes. Oh ho ho yes. Uh, 
and a one, and a two, and a three. Yeah, sure, we'll go with the Lost Mine. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Just awesome. All right, it's great hand. Uh oh. We're in trouble. That's like the scariest turn to play in the format, pretty much. All the blue isn't the best color in the set. Doesn't mean much once you're staring down those creatures, of course. They're missing a third land. Just gotta hope to get this black dragon in play as soon as possible. Spy? Uh-oh. Okay, I think I still Ogre. And then Priest can block Spy. And then if they keep Spy back, I can kill it next turn to clear a path for Ogre. It shrinks down the Ogre, but... I just care about making treasure. It's fine if they complete their dungeon. Right, I can technically cast Tiamat next turn. Although we already drew two of our Dragons. Opponent still stuck on three. Uh, I guess we'll attack first. I'm okay trading Priest for Guild Thief, I think, and then just kill the Malison. They might have their own Grim Bounty. Okay, makes me happy they didn't trade for Priest, because now we can tap down the Thief. Alright, Bone's just racing. Can play both here. And our opponent's pretty far behind. Charm Sleep the Dragon. Schedule to take eight. Alright, six. Ooh, perfect draw. Level up. And level up. Attack. And then probably pump the priests. That way they still have to chump it and then take eight. Yeah, Paladin class is a pretty messed up card. Can still draw Tiamat. Alright, I'll take it. Well, I mean, this draft went better than expected after first picking Tiamat. 
Sadly didn't get to go all five colors with the green and blue dragons, but I think probably for the best. So yeah, I mean, I don't think we'll ever top this deck. Dungeons and Dragons, we did the thing the set was designed to do. We completed dungeons, we cast plenty of dragons, and we even got to seven wins. So yeah, sometimes it pays off to be a little greedy with the mana, and uh, as long as you've got the treasures to back it up, you can get away with uh, casting some powerful rares and various colors. This is a card we would have loved to see in our draft, but didn't. Circle of Dreams Druid will be a fun build around for Constructed. Pack one, pick one, and limit it. If you want to force Black Rats, Price of Loyalty, otherwise Outlander's decent too. Lair of the Hydra, perfect first pick, and plenty of Constructed applications as well. Guardian of Faith. Have yet to really see much of it in action, but on paper it's a fine card. Don't know if I would first pick it over some of these good commons between Hunter and Ghoul for the red-black sacrifice deck, and even something on watch has proven to be a pretty good removal spell, with the flexibility of being a pump spell as well. The red dragon was a missing puzzle piece in our deck. Definitely take it over a wish. I've also been Quite impressed by the Basilisk lately, the combo with Spare Dagger can salvage some bad decks. Fighter class, definitely not as good as Paladin class, potentially still worth building around for the equipment deck. But uh, yeah, there's a Price of Loyalty Wizard class, also very good if you're willing to draft blue. And then the Herd Gorger, excellent curve topper. Bandit Lord also decent, quite a few goblins in this set. Although the Tiger Tribe Hunter is also a fine five drop given how good the sacrifice archetype is, and this can function as a sacrifice outlet in combination with Price of Loyalty. So for now, wanna thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.